Okay, so uh, Gamba sent in a question. He needed a little help solving a system by elimination. And he said he thinks he's doing something wrong because he keeps getting 0 equals 0. And I got that question and realized that that would probably be exactly what we needed for this lesson, uh, special types of linear systems that you are working on right now. There are a number of different types of linear systems that are sort of unusual, that don't seem to fit the mold. Um, really there's three general types if you were to graph them and sometimes graphing them is uh, an easier way to visualize what's going on really if you graph um, two equations on the same xy graph there's three ways it could turn out either you could end up with one line that is crossed by another line in which case you have a single point that works for both equations and that's kind of what we've been been working working toward or looking for uh, along the way Another possibility is that you have two lines that are actually exactly side by side. They're parallel, which means that they don't ever cross and there aren't any points that both equations have in common. And then the third possibility is that you have two lines that are actually right on top of each other. We have one line right here and then the other one is directly on top of it. Yeah, so that every solution that works for one equation also works for the other equation. And my guess is we're gonna find that when Gamba was doing uh, solving this equation right here that he was running into one of those special situations. So let's take a look at what happens when we actually solve his uh, system here using elimination. First we have 3x minus 2y equals 6 and 6x minus 4y oops y there we go equals 12. Now what we need to do in order to use elimination is to set one variable opposite itself in the other equation, which means we need to multiply one of these two equations by something so that one of the variables cancels out when we add them together. So let's take this left-hand equation and multiply it by negative 2 so that our 6's are opposite each other, our, our 6 x's. So if we multiply everything here by negative 2, negative 2 times this whole equation, we get negative 2 times 3x and we get negative 6x negative 2 times negative 2y gives us positive 4y and then negative 2 times 6 gives us negative 12. So now our x's are opposite each other so we can go ahead and add these two equations vertically. So we'll put our other equation under here and add straight down. So we get 6x plus negative 6x that's 0 plus negative 4y plus 4y, that's another 0, equals 12 minus 12, which is another 0. So yeah, obviously this is what he kept coming up with, and I certainly agree. 0 equals 0 is sort of your final solution there. What that tells you, since this is a true statement, and that's the key, since this is a true statement, we know that any value that solves this pair of equation or this equation right here, will also work for this equation over here. These two equations are the same thing. And we can see that because all we did here to make them exactly opposite each other was to multiply this equation by negative 2. If I actually had taken this first equation and multiplied by positive 2, look what would have happened. If I took this here and multiply it times regular 2, I get 6x minus 4y equals 12. And that is exactly the same as the other equation, which means that these two equations are the same. This is one of those situations where you have one line right on top of the other if you were to graph it. So anything that solves this equation will also solve this equation. Now if you do this and you come up with a false statement like 3 equals 5, that's not true obviously, that's false. That tells you that there are no solutions. So this one is every solution, this one is no solution none. Yeah. There you go.